Hey everybody, welcome to this edition of Dubro 101. Today we're going to talk about some techniques for balancing model airplane propellers using our True Spin Prop Balancer. Of course, there are a lot of different model airplane propellers out there, as well as many different ways to balance them. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to focus on the nylon and wood two-blade propellers that you'll find on 95% of the RC airplanes out there. So let's get started. The first thing I want to talk about is making sure that the tool is set up correctly. The True Spin Prop Balancer has two side plates, and the height of each plate is adjustable. For most of the balancing jobs you'll do, you want to make sure that both of those plates are set to the exact same height, and here's how you do that. Take a piece of scrap wood like this 1x2, and you slide it under the plates and on top of the base of the balancer. Then you loosen the nuts that hold the side plates in place and lower them down onto the wood. Once you have both plates in place, tighten the nuts and remove the wood. And now both plates are at exactly the same height. You also want to make sure that you're using a flat and stable surface to work on. In the first example, we're going to balance a nylon propeller. These propellers are made with an injection molding process. And because of that, sometimes there's some plastic flashing around the edges. And if that's the case with your propeller, you wanna clean that off before you try to balance it. And usually all it takes is a few swipes with some 200 grit sandpaper to get things cleaned up. And my philosophy is that you want to balance the propeller in exactly the same configuration that you're going to fly it. So if you have to enlarge the hub, or use spacers to get it to fit your application, go ahead and do that now before you put the propeller on the balancer. Now we're going to place the propeller onto the balancing shaft. To do that, we need to remove the fuel tubing, washer, and spring, and those parts just slide off. We're then left with two conical aluminum pieces. Note that these can be oriented either way. And there may be some cases where you want to turn one of them around, but most of the time you'll have the best luck with the narrow ends pointing towards each other. So slide the outer conical piece off. You can then place the propeller onto the shaft and it doesn't matter which direction it's facing. Now we add the other cone back on. And then the spring, the washer, and the fuel tubing. And you want to press the fuel tubing down until the spring compresses just slightly. Now it's time to place the propeller with balancing shaft onto the rollers that are built into the side plates of the balancer. Now keep in mind that this is a very sensitive tool. Your results can be influenced by small air currents that are in the room. Those air currents may come from air conditioning vents, or a ceiling fan, or even your own breathing. So be aware of that and manage things the best you can. Now, once you get the shaft on the rollers, hold the propeller horizontal and gently release it. We can see that one blade dips down. So let's double check that. And the same blade dips. Now, just to be sure, I like to spin the aluminum cones on the hub just to reseat things. And we'll give it one more shot. All right, we definitely have a heavy blade here. And I like to mark the heavy blade so that I can keep track of it while I'm balancing. And all it takes is a small dot on the back of the hub. If I'm balancing a black propeller like this, I'll use a silver Sharpie. If I'm balancing a gray propeller, a black Sharpie does well for me. As long as you can see the mark, it doesn't matter what color you use. Now we're going to make some adjustments to actually get this propeller balanced. And as I mentioned before, there are many different ways to do that. Some people like to use super glue or nail polish on the light blade, but I actually prefer to use tape on the light blade. And for a black propeller like this, I use standard electrical tape. If I'm balancing a propeller that's gray or any other color, I use clear packing tape or clear scotch tape. Determining how much tape you need and where to place it on the propeller blade is a process of trial and error. What I like to do is get a strip of tape and place it sticky side down on parchment or wax paper, and I then use a razor blade to cut it into different size segments. And this gives me the tools that I need to quickly experiment and hone in on the size of tape that I need. To get started with balancing, we're going to pick a random piece of tape and then place it halfway out on the light blade. And what I like to do is place the tape so that part of the tape overhangs the leading edge of the propeller, and that allows me to easily grab it so it can be repositioned. 
and it looks like the other blade is still heavy. So what we're gonna do is move that piece of tape further out, closer to the tip, and try again. And we're still heavy on the other side, so we'll move it out a little more. And the other side is still heavy. So even with this piece of tape close to the tip, the other side is still heavier. So what we need to do is get rid of this tape and try a larger piece of tape. Now I'll grab a larger piece and start back in the middle. I'll test it again. Still light, so we'll move it out. Oh, we're getting very close now. Move it out just a little bit. And the propeller doesn't move at all. So that's where we want to be. And what you want to do now is I use my thumbnail to mark the position of the tape. Then I pick it up and I place it back down on the propeller, making sure that all of the tape is completely on the back side of the blade. Now, if you've gone through this process and you've done a lot of repositioning of the tape, the adhesive on that particular piece may be used up. If that's the case, you wanna cut a new piece of the same size and place that instead. But I feel pretty confident with this one. And we'll double check the balance one more time. And that looks pretty good. I think this propeller is ready to go now. Now I'm going to show you how I like to balance wood propellers. And the initial steps are exactly the same as those I used on nylon propellers. The difference comes once you determine the heavy blade. And this propeller definitely has a heavy blade. So the difference is, rather than adding tape to the light blade, we're now going to use sandpaper to remove material from the heavy blade. I like to use 200 grit sandpaper to sand the back side of the heavy blade. And there are a couple of things you want to keep in mind here. First of all, you want to remove material without drastically altering the airfoil shape built into the propeller. So don't focus on any one specific area while you're sanding. Also, you want to make sure that you're not removing too much material at any one time. So sand a little bit, check the balance, sand a little more if necessary. If you remove too much material in one sanding session, your heavy blade has now become your light blade, and you're going to be stuck sanding the other blade to compensate. So we'll get started with this propeller. Again, I'll double check that I'm sanding the heavy blade, and I'll sand about the outer inch, inch and a half on the back side. Check the balance. And it's still heavy, so we'll remove a little more. Check again. Just a little bit more should do it. And that looks really good. I think we're where we need to be. As you can see, balancing propellers is not a very difficult or time-consuming thing to do. And as you gain more experience, you'll find your own tips and tricks that will help you make the process faster, more consistent, and more precise. Most importantly, you'll find that running balanced propellers in your models gives you improved performance and also longer life out of your motors, airframes, and electronics. So thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to this channel so that you do not miss any of our upcoming videos.